April 8th through April 14th marks National Library Week. Close to 1 million people visit Stanford's four public libraries, but most stop right here at the Ferguson. About 300,000 books fill the floors of the Ferguson Library and alongside them are the people who enjoy them. It serves a fairly large population, 120,000 people. I come to the library because we have a lot of story times for kids. I can read while I'm here and uh, don't have to carry them all home, though I do carry a lot home. The Ferguson Library opened its doors in 1882. When the libraries first started back in the earlier part of the 1800s, it was that very thing, that people were concerned that everyone have access to information equally. And so as a result, the library became a part of the community and it has been a strong part of it ever since. Over the years, the building has expanded to encompass 100,000 square feet and includes three branches throughout the city. Dematia says the library has also expanded into more of a communication center. There are many people that do not have computers at home. If it weren't for the library, they'd be totally disenfranchised. Uh, everybody in the community can have an email address because if you don't have it at home, you can have it through the library. The library offers various programs throughout the week for Stanford residents, and employees say it has become more of a community center. It really serves as a community meeting place for families. It's a place where you can interact with others. You have books, music, CDs. You have, it's a very good place for interaction. You find a lot of elderly people like myself here, but it gives you, there's, gives you something to do. It's the only thing of its kind relative to the way in which bring it brings people together, the way in which it provides education, the way in which it provides cultural and learning experiences. In Stanford, Ali Warshavsky, it's relevant dot com.